If you're enjoying Pigotin Podcast, then why not sign up to our Patreon? You can find it at patreon.com forward slash Pigotted, and on there you get loads of extra benefits, such as early access to episodes, you get access to Pigotted Extra, which is extra content from our guests, usually about 45 minutes to an hour long of extra content every single week, you get merchandise, you get to ask questions, you get to be part of our Discord community. We have a Discord server where people chat and ask questions and discuss topics that have been brought up on the podcast. You get all that through Patreon, and it starts from just three pounds a month plus you'd be supporting the podcast you'd be helping the podcast to grow helping us to fund bigger and better guests and to pay for all the editing and that kind of thing so please if you are enjoying pigoted then think about signing up and becoming a patreon from just three pounds a month over at patreon.com forward slash pigoted hello 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 welcome to pigoted podcast joining me today is just an expert because our comedian uh got track and traced at literally nine o'clock this morning three hours before we were due to record usually if you've listened to these podcasts before you know that we have one comedian plus me plus an expert and that makes for a certain kind of chemistry uh that the podcast is i was gonna say that the podcast is known for it's not known for fucking anything but that's how we usually operate but this time because we had a track and trace last minute we have just got one expert for you it's going to be me and an expert in a high intense almost like frost nixon no not anything like frost nixon i would describe it as intimate you describe it as intimate very sexy (laughs) um so hello that voice that you can hear is our expert dr philip donkersley a uh, pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Did I pronounce that correctly? Perfectly. Did I? Indeed. I was really worried about whether or not... It, well, I say really worried, mild concern. It, it, I mean, he didn't keep me up all night. Uh, Donkersley or Dockersley or Don Kernsley. No, I used to get Bonkersley a lot. Bonkersley? Yeah, with a big B. Uh, who was that from? Who called you Bonkersley? That would be school times. Oh, yeah. really? what? When you were at school? When I was at school, when I was a wee baby boy. So when you were at school, your nickname was Bonkersley? Indeed. You got lucky with oh, that. Oh, I didn't. You, really? <laughs> oh, it's hot. The, 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 the difficulties and the, and the tensions around being called one letter difference in your, in your surname. Oh, you wouldn't imagine it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think what my nickname was at school. I think people just called me fat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was fine with that, to be honest with you. I kind of rode it. Bonkersley's yeah. all right. You can get through. I think I did all right until uh, that song Bonkers came out. Oh, Dizzy, Dizzy, Rascal. Dizzy Rascal was the end of you, wasn't it? Was, it? it was. Whenever you went into the room, yep. bonkers. Uh, did you did you play it up though? Did you come into school? You know, blacked up. Oh. No, I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I just saw for a minute then my my favourite thing in the world, which is when an expert puts their head in their hands and goes, "How can I distance myself from this podcast already?" I was only joking. Um, in, I meant like I I grew up in a place which uh, now has been quite nicely exploited by Nigel Farage. So don't put put it past me. <laughs> oh really? All my friends. So, so you grew up in. We talked about this before, but you grew up in Peckham. Peckham and sort of. Uh, the the London Kent border, you know the the nation see the sort of the height of uh, racism in England, where it all comes from. Really? Yeah. Oh shit! I thought I thought I the North well claimed a lot that. of that. Oh, I feel like the North North has a good go of it, but you know you, you don't really like to listen to people, twats like Farage, so <laughs> you got that going for you. Yeah, I think that there's still something. Do you know what? I I, I, mean, I mean, we weren't due to talk about this in any way, but I think that. The way that Farage kind of markets himself as like, listen, I am a bit racist, but you should listen to me because I've got a pint in my hand. I think a lot of people get blindsided by that. They go, oh, well, you know, those views are a bit dodgy, but he likes a pint of uh, John Smith. So I'll I'll leave it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Doctor, do you ever get called Doctor Phil? I do. Doctor Phil Good, actually. It's my uh, stand up name. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, what is your, just very quickly, what's your area of expertise? Bees. And <laughs> you said that so <laughs> sexy as well. Bees, I just love them. Um, okay, bees. Spe- now, look, I'm going to start. I'm going to tell you the my favorite fact about bees, Go for it. which is also coincidentally the only fact that I know about bees. Now, I imagine that you're already going to know this because, you know, uh, but. Listeners won't know it, and so I think it's worth uh, mentioning. So, 
it's the fact about how they discovered that bees perceive time. Have you heard this? Go ahead. Tell me your facts. You have heard it, haven't you? Yeah, he definitely has. Do you know about this, Finn? Motherfucker. How does everyone fucking know about that? Right. If you don't know about this, this is the fact about how how they figured out that bees perceive time. So they had a, uh, a hive and they put sugar water outside the hive every day at four o'clock. And eventually the bees started coming out to check whether the sugar water was there. So therefore bees perceive time. But then some of the scientists were like, well, how do you know that bees aren't measuring the angle of the sun? And so they were like, oh, fuck, fine. So they put the hive in a dark box with no light in it. And then the same thing happened, you know, come out at four o'clock, ha-ha, bees perceive time. Then some other scientists were like, oh, no, well, maybe they're measuring the heat from the earth and the blah, blah, blah. And so they were like, fuck. And this went back and forth and back and forth until they ended up recreating the experiment underground at the bottom of a salt mine. Same thing happened, bees perceive time. And other scientists were like, well, wait, maybe they're measuring the magnetic blah, 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 blah. Anyway, the way that they proved it in the end was that a scientist in Paris did the experiment, four o'clock, uh, bees came out to check the sugar water, and then he flew the bees to New York, and then they came out at 10 o'clock in the morning because they were jet-lagged because bees perceived time. How fucking brilliant is that? I love that. It's so cool. I just love how, how a scientist has had a conversation where he's gone, do you know what? I'm going to jet lag the little fuckers. That'll prove me right forever. I'm not going to give them the coffee or anything. <laughs> so I, can't recover. I wonder what the bees thought when they were on the plane. Just, oh, cool, we can fly. Dude, <laughs> we can fly. I love the idea that these French bees got out of fucking Newark Airport and were like, oh, ha, ha. where's the bloody hell are we? Wait, <laughs> bring me the honey. We are so far away from home. We are fucked. We are absolutely fucked. Oh, no, you're hearing it's German accent. Yeah, he's, he's going German yeah. now, isn't it? He's going yeah. German. It's going very sort of like uh, inglo Inglorious Bastards kind of German. Inglorious Bastards bees. That needs a fucking remake. Inglorious Beasts. Oh, oh, this guy. He's on it. He's a lightning in a bottle. This. Who needs the extra comedian? You can do both of those things. Um, so, I, so here's the thing about bees that I think that I know, but you are probably going to tell me is incorrect, right? So I've heard, and I don't know how I've heard this, it's just knowledge that is floating around in my head. I've heard that if all the bees in the world were to, like, go, or the majority of the bees in the world were to go, then we are, as a planet, absolutely, categorically, comprehensively, totally fucked. Would you like to know what's up with that? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, so, with when we're talking about bees, most people, through, through no fault of their own, because of just how, how they've been raised and what they know about it, they think of bees as just honeybees. So, guys, wait. Guys, guys in big hives. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. There are other types of bees. There are thousands of species of bee. So, not every bee makes honey? Well, No. <laughs> Uh, so you, you, Fuck have, you, have, you have your honeybees, right? And then you've got your bumblebees. So bumble bumblebees aren't honeybees. They're 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 related vaguely, but they're not the same thing. You've just blown my fucking mind. It's great, isn't it? Do you know what's amazing as well is that I bet you didn't think that this level of knowledge would get this much of a reaction, and yet Ooh, I like, think that's the good bit. Yeah. Like I bet you thought the bathroom presseners was dead high, and you've come on and said honeybees and bumblebees are different, and I've just my world's fallen apart. Holy shit. Right, right so you've got, you got bumblebees, right? Yeah. Bumblebees do make honey, but it tastes like feet. Uh, <laughs> it's horrible why? stuff. Why? Is it so, like, honeybees, very good, very clean, uh, very hygienic species. Okay. So when they want to defecate, when they want to poo, they'll leave the hive and they'll fly out <laughs> and they'll do it outside. I love bumblebees how... Bumblebees do it inside the hive. Sorry to interrupt, yeah. but I love how because I don't know... <laughs> Because you don't know that bumblebees and honeybees are different, I have to say pooing is yeah, defecate. Yeah, you have to say poo instead of defecate because there was a minute of you where you thought he might not know what this word means. So let's let's, let's dumb gonna, this down. Just one I'm level. just going to dumb this down. Come on. Come on, Dr. Phil. As few <laughs> syllables as possible. Um, so honeybees shit inside their own hives. Uh, honeybees shit outside. Outside. Bumblebees shit inside. And it's the shit what makes honey tasty. The shit, uh, because bumblebees do it inside the hive, their hives end up piling up with crap. 
Yeah. Uh, and then it makes the, hu- the honey taste really awful because it tastes like beef shit, basically. Just oh, like right. Just years worth of beef shit. That also, and um, uh, bumblebees have like minuscule hives compared to honeybees, so the amount of honey they produce, not really that worthwhile doing. So they make very small, very shit amounts of honey, so yes. we don't really bother with it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then, right, so you've got your honeybees. That's like four species in the world. There's like, there's the Japanese honeybee, there's the European honeybee, there's the giant honeybee, which is about the size, can you show it to your thumb? Yeah, it's a bit bigger than the size of your thumb. So yeah. wait, wait, there are bees knocking about that are bigger than my thumb. No, just just honeybees that are bigger than your thumb. When you say, so when you say bigger than my thumb, are we talking the head of my thumb or my entire... The entirety of your fork, thumb. Fuck, right. Look, for, for posterity <laughs> on fucking camera. By the way, if you want to watch this on YouTube.com, you absolutely can, and you can see my actual thumb, so you can see how incredible... Th- there are bees that could beat me in a thumb war. Absolutely. That's fucking mad. They're so fucking cool. Where they're, are they? They're also in Japan. So, so there are bees sort of northeast Asia sort of area. So there are bees knocking around in northeast Asia that are bigger than this, like two yeah. centimeter yeah. long. Yeah, that's just like one of them. There's there's thousands of them in a hive. Fuck hell, no. But they're they're less inclined to sting you than a honeybee. Really? Like, yeah, their their main form of defense is uh, um, they get like thirty of them, and whatever they want to kill, they'll just sit on. And then buzz and heat it up until it can't can't survive anymore because it's just too hot. That's what they do. Yeah, rather than they, they basically sting. do they basically do a pile on yeah. and kill that way. Yeah. I love it. That little bee transformers, they all sort of come together and just suffocate Peace the prey. Unite. That's fucking cool. Yeah. But we're getting that's it, we're getting off track. Yeah, well, right. we will do that a lot in this yes. podcast. Right. So you've got your honeybees. Honeybees. A couple of species. You've got your bumblebees, there's about a hundred species of them. Right. And they're, they're all very adapted to like cold environments because of all the fur. Okay. Um, and then you've got your solitary bees, which are like bees that live on their own. They don't make hives. There are bees that just live on their own. Yeah, they're really cute. They're like they're, they're t- much smaller than, than honeybees. Really cute faces, big eyes, and little fuzzy bit. Bellies. How do they? So hang about a minute. How do they survive if they just live on their? Because I thought again, and I don't know much about kin anything. But I thought that th- one of the main things that a species needs to survive is like all the fucking mates and, and yeah. you know, like collaboration and they need to be able to have partners and things so they can have kids. But if they just spend their entire lives on their own. Yeah, they, they come together. Um, they'll sort of randomly go around and mate. And, and rather than make a big nest where they can all live together, the female, sort of the, the mum of the bees, comes along, gets mated, and then finds little uh, little bits of masonry, like, like brickwork and cementing, and sometimes like you've ever seen bee hotels, like all the um, uh, bamboo canes shoved in. The yes, box. yes. They'll, they'll go inside the little holes in there, and they'll lay their eggs in there, and then she'll she'll lay one egg, and she'll fly out. She'll go and get some pollen, and she'll bring that back, and she'll leave the pollen with the egg. So that when the egg hatches, it's got some food, and then some of these. Some so of these she, yeah. Does she just basically she l- says it all on herself? Like a single mum, really. That's it. She's <laughs> a self-employed single mother bee. It's great. Right, so they, shame, uh, shame. She doesn't uh, spend her life on benefits. Oh, she's <laughs> fucking hell. Sorry, I can't. I can't just let that drop. Yeah. Even in my awful. even in my head, I thought that shit. Don't say it. But there was an overriding urge in me to make a dreadful pun. You know, you've got you've got the right idea, but you know, you could have just used Bumble. Ah, oh, fucking hell. Do you know what? Thank God we don't have an extra comedian on yeah. this. We don't need it. We Too don't need it. Oh, mate. So we've got all these different types of bees. Yeah. Um, so when, we, when people think about what happens if all the bees die, they mostly think about what happens if all the honeybees die. Yeah. And if all the honeybees die, we're fine. We've got tens of thousands of wild bee species knocking around. But there'd be no more honey that doesn't taste of feet. Exactly. That's kind of, that maybe is a problem. The cultural sort of like the heritage and the world we have because of bees would probably suffer but even if all the wild bees die out a lot of the pollination of like plants and stuff for making food for plant reproduction for just general there being plants on the planet and then making oxygen right yeah a lot of that pollination is done by wind or actually by flies oh really like blue bottles yeah you hate them bits because they're all buzzy again your face yeah 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 right they pollinate they pollinate a fuck ton. Really? And you know wasps? 
Oh, I fucking know. I hate wasps. Everyone hates wasps. They pollinate so much. Do they? They do so much hard work with pollination. Everyone no hates way. Them. And it's such a sad thing because they like right. They pollinate right, but also they're predators. So they go around picking like green fly off of off of your crops. Really? So they do. They're the whole package. Do you know what? I've been fed a lie, right? Because I always thought. That if if you lose all the bees, then you're absolutely fucked and we won't be able to pollinate and shit like that. And I've always been told that wasps do nothing but are angry little dickheads. Like they're just they they just they they buzz around and they pick fights and stuff and they don't really contribute anything. But you're telling me that actually they pollinate loads. Do you want do you want to feel really bad about how you felt about wasps now? Yeah, I, I, right. regardless of what you you're honestly feel so bad now. You could say, listen, they they volunteer <laughs> at the hospice once a week. I still fucking hate them. Oh, is, are you going to feel so bad now? This is awful. Oh god, you're going to say right, you know, like yeah. they're like a cure or something for the, some disease. No, you know the reason they get really angry and aggressive? Why? It's because their mum's died. Really? Their, their, <laughs> their queen has died. Same thing happened to Batman. They've got <laughs> nothing else to live for. <laughs> so, so hang. No, 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 no. no. Yeah, yeah. So hang about a minute. Yeah. So you're telling me that before a wasp's mum dies, the wasp is just super chill. Yeah, oh, yeah, it just goes around. It gets gets some gets some pollen. Goes back to the hive. Drops off. Sees. Oh, there's a nice little caterpillar. I'll have that. Takes it back. Here, mum, I've bought you some food. And, and then, then one nice. day, one, one day, the wasp queen dies. And then the wasp will like, well, fuck, we've got nothing else to live for now. No. Let's go get some jam. Shut the fuck. Is that really true? Yeah, because the queen wasp, she exerts some sort of, she exerts kind of like behavioral control over her offspring. Exactly like how queen bees do it. What? They're like the queen bees and the queen wasps, they, they exude this sort of smell that make, drives behaviour. <laughs> Are you? I was going to say pheromone. You yeah. were going to say pheromone and then you stopped and you looked at me again and went, he doesn't know what a pheromone yeah, is. I'm going to say smell. I know what pheromone yeah, is. Yeah, okay. they, they use pheromone. A smell. Yeah. <laughs> a chemical signal. Okay, so they have pheromones that make the bees and the wasps act in certain ways. Yeah, so they drive them towards going out and getting food to bring back, to give to the queen so she can eat it, to make more eggs, right? So as she lays these eggs and those eggs are the foragers' sisters. So okay. they're really encouraged to go out and make more, basically more sisters of themselves. I was going to ask a really stupid question then. And then I thought to myself, do you know what? Don't ask that because you'll think you're really thick. But I honestly don't think that you could think that I'm stupider at this point. So I'm just going to go ahead and ask it. Do bees have brains? Not in how you're thinking. Yeah, it's a good question. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yes. is, I don't think it's anything such a stupid question. <laughs> Do you know what? I was looking then and I was thinking to myself, I've got to ask it. So, because so, they're so small, do they have like, they don't have brains in, in like actual little rubbery, spongy yeah, little yeah, things. Exactly. So they're, they're, they're capable of learning. Okay. So, so, so they're really they're really good at learning. They've got a sort of internal GPS system. When you say capable of learning, yeah. what's the most complex thing a bee could learn? Well, they've learned to play football. Fuck <laughs> right off. There's no way you've taught bees the offside rule. Oh, oh, that's got, I've got to include that now. I've got to, everyone forgets about the offside rule when they take yeah. football. Mate, and you know what? Sometimes it's really close and they have to take it to BAR. Thank uh, you. That one works. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Good night, Wembley. Uh, <laughs> you know, if you throw enough at the wall, one of them's going to stick. Yeah, that's that's very much the, uh, the the motto of this podcast. So, um, so they've learned to play football. When you say they've learned to play football, are we actually talking football here with a tiny little ball Made right. of pollen that you've painted white with little black dots on. Just a tiny little rubber ball. Fuck and off. They've learned if they can sort if they dribble the ball over to the goal, they'll get a sugar reward. No way. Uh, so oh right. Okay. And, and then you can make it competitive. You can get two if two <laughs> nests fighting off against each other to get the ball into their goal so they get the sugar reward. That's fucking are, are there videos of this? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Uh, Stanford, I think, did it. Stanford Uni. Do you know what do you know what this is? This is what it is, is it's nerdy people who have been picked on growing up. And what they've done is they've held on to that resentment and they have taken it out on a lower species. And they were, you will play football for me because I am the master. <laughs> I um, Okay, sweet. So, so when you say they've learned to play football, they've learned to dribble the ball and put it, like there's not much passing 
going there's, on. There's they, passing, there's tackling, there's, there's a bit... Of, there's passing. Yeah. They've learned to pass. Yeah. Bees can pass a football. An intercept. An intercept. Fuck. <laughs> All right, okay. So I thought that passing was going to be too ridiculous, yeah. but I'm going to ask this next one, and if this is true, it's going to blow my fucking mind. Can they hold a formation? Oh, in what sense? You mean talking about like... Okay. Like 4 4 2? Like. <laughs> you gotta draw the line somewhere. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know whether or not. Now you're was, just being silly. I didn't know whether or not that there was a B somewhere so clever that it could operate as a number 10. <laughs> Oh, Marcello Bielsa. I was trying to think, I'll come up with something with Ronaldo. I'm like, fuck, I can't think of the other right now. Mate, that's fucking oh. great. Ah, right, okay, so bees can learn to play football. What else have people taught bees to do? Can they do like... They can do sniffer, they like, act like sniffer dogs. Really? Yeah, they've got bee, sort of sniffer dog bees. They can examine like, par parcels in, in, pass in post offices and stuff, bombs. That would be so funny in an airport. Just a policeman. The sniffer dog's off today. <laughs> I've got this ball of bees. Yeah, a policeman with like a, a balloon full of bees on a string that he just kind of dangles in front of packages. Or even worse, just a single bee. <laughs> <laughs> One bee that they've tied on a string that they just push to the thing. Anything there? Anything? No, there's not. Okay, yeah. you're free to go. Shit, so, so they can... So is their sense of smell really good then? It's fantastic, yeah. So yeah. would that be because they have to, like, uh, you know, when they're, like, getting pollen and shit like that, they smell out the pollen, is that what they do? Yeah, um, so they, they, when they're f going out looking for food, right, they're, they're using a combination of visual cues on, like, a big scale. Okay. So they'll, they'll think about flying over a whole, like, farmland landscape, lots of different fields, lots of, lots of colours, lots of shapes. They'll look out for what they think is the biggest... Uh, color they like the most and then they'll fly down to it so they use sight from really far away and when they're down on the ground actually near their bees they're mostly using their antennae to smell things out and find like flowers have actually got nectar in them wow so actually they are really really good at what they at what they do then yeah they're probably the best that's incredible yeah. so okay so how far can a bee do you know how far a bee can like you know map out as it were yeah, like yeah so it depends on your bee but you see, the solitary bees that I told you about. Yeah, they they usually forage within about a kilometer of where they're like where they've decided to lay their eggs. Okay. And then you got your bumblebees. Um, they're actually capable of going up about three or four kilometers, probably up to five. Okay. Uh, and then your honeybees. Theoretically, people have observed them traveling like 10, 15 kilometers away from their nest. Really, so you, fifteen you, kilometers you away. Put down one hive in an area, and that that hive can explore. 15 kilometers. So it's like, what, 10 miles? Something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, Fucking hell. It's like sort of the maximum we can sort of accurately predict how far they can go. 10 miles is... And that's there and, and then, then come back again, laden with food. But the thing is as well is, like, I've... I've ob I was going to say I've observed bees then. <laughs> what a brag. Um, I mean, they don't... They're not known for moving fast, are they? They're not, like, rapid little... Th things that buzz through the sky at, you I know think, i think they can go a fair clip yeah well how how much is a fair clip probably about th maybe, maybe up to 15 miles an hour in a nice a dead straight line a bee can go 15 miles an hour yeah honeybees yeah mm, I've, pretty, I, no they're pretty fast i'm right? calling bullshit so, so, i've never in my life seen a bee go 15 miles so an hour. What, what i've never been on the motorway you and a bee <laughs> passed me do you know oh, what sorry, i mean one five not five zero Oh, oh! Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, that I can get. That sounds too fast. <laughs> I thought you said 50 miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, imagine, yeah. imagine merging on a slip road. You just, <laughs> oh, it's a fucking honeybee, isn't it? Oh, they're mad at this time. Okay, even 15 miles an hour, yeah, yeah. one five miles an hour is ridiculous. That's what I mean. It's a fair clip. So what, what, what you're seeing when you're looking at a honeybee... Is it's like human height, right? You're you're down where the flowers are. You're 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 beneath their sort of speedway. Oh right, okay. So but even so, they never like you, you'd still see them like just zipping and stuff. Yeah. Um. But, but when they're on the ground, when they're down in where where we are, that's because they know there's food there. So okay. they spend all their time and energy on the ground, being as thorough as possible, just like dot printer, dot matrix printer, scanning the whole environment, trying all the flowers. Is that pretty much how they do it? Yeah. Well, so. 
different bees do it different ways. But uh, bumblebees tend to be kind of random. They sort of, as with the name, they bumble between all the flowers. doesn't really matter. What okay. Are. But honeybees are super, act, like, they just go through really rigorously every single flower they can find and take everything they can get. Really? That's what makes them such good foragers. And why it's wow. such a successful species. Okay. Is that because, are they doing it that way because the queen is giving them pheromone instructions to do it that way or are they just built to do it that way? They're just kind of built to do it that way. That's just how their their sort of behavioural evolution is driven towards. That's, I, I learned so much on this because I would have thought that the way that evolution works is that it's, it's you know, you know that that's most adapted to change or whatever and whoever changes and it's the best change, you know, survives and thrives. But you've got these two species that are doing it completely opposite ways to one another. Yeah, and you think that the honeybee, with its regimented approach, would have sort of, you know, like... Well, there's, there's a couple of things there. It's, um, so for one, it, you, they, they've evolved different ways. Yeah. And that has resulted in the species biology being very different. It's like honeybees, they exist in like huge hives, like tens of thousands of, of individuals. Okay. In one little box. Okay. And bumblebees have a much a tiny hive, like fifty individuals. Really? So that that that's the sort of the result of them having different strategies. They they're still able to survive, but their colonies are so much smaller as a result. I see. Yeah. Okay. Now the other thing is this is this is the really this is the new hot shit. The new hot shit. The, the new hot shit. For, exclusive. For... Pigoted exclusive. <laughs> Go on. Uh, so with with honeybees. Right. Yeah. A lot. Everyone thinks that I'm going to take care of the bees. I'm going to do my part. I'm going to get a box of honeybees. I'm going to start keeping bees. Yeah. That's the worst thing you can do. What? The worst thing you can do to keep bees is keep bees. Yeah. Um. So honeybees, <laughs> right. not native to the UK. Okay. They were introduced. From where? From Mediterranean. Guess who? Who introduced everything crap to this country? Uh. Who introduced everything crap to this country? That'd be the Romans. The Romans. You were going to help me there because yep. you knew full well that I wasn't you getting there myself. What yeah. else did the Romans introduce this country that was crap? Rabbits. Straight straight roads? <laughs> Rabbits and taxes and uh, destruction of our native heritage and culture. Yeah. I didn't realize, <laughs> I, again, I hugely apologize to anyone who's listening to this who is Roman from yes. several thousand years ago. I didn't realize that Dr. Phil here holds such anti- Caesar views. Last thing, I'd actually probably like to throw out a personal apology to Natalie Haynes. Who's Natalie Haynes? Natalie Haynes is, the, is BBC Radio 4's top classicist slash comedian. Slash comedian? Yeah, oh, she's brilliant. I think anybody who uh, describes themselves as a classicist slash comedian can automatically forego the second part of their description. She's good. She's really good. <laughs> I mean, I can highly recommend it. So what sort of comedy does she... So she she takes um she takes oh, this is so completely off topic but I love it um, okay so she takes all of like the classic uh, Greco Roman stories she takes Greco Roman stories like like sort of the story of Medusa the it? story of Medusa right and, and then she, she she explains them in, with a sort of modern take like a comedic twist yes be honest with you that sounds fucking shit I think it's incredibly <laughs> compelling. <laughs> you might do. No wonder it's found a home on Radio Four. Put That's it that way. I say. I'm a big Radio Four with fan. the fucking working men's clubs comedy <laughs> clubs that I do. You wouldn't get away with that shit. Going well, up no, to definitely not loads of people that pay two pound fifty for a pint at a members club and say, "Hey guys, listen to the story of Medusa. It's a modern retelling." Get fucking glassed off stage. So, so Medusa the story. Okay. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people get the story of Medusa wrong. You know. Yeah. Because she's a victim, but everyone thinks that she is um, like this horrible monster. Because of Clash of the Titans, yeah. Is it? I've yeah, never seen Clash yeah. of the Titans. Well, the the nineteen sixties version with the claymation skeletons. Really oh, love that film growing up as a kid. Because everyone thinks that she's like the, just this horrible bitch that just turns people into stone. Yeah, but she was actually dead fit, wasn't she? And it was some goddess. I imagine Hera, if I had to guess. Athene. Was it Athene? Mm -hmm. She usually Hera, who's spiteful. a well, yeah, Hera's, who's a bitch. Hera's, Hera's quite spiteful, but Athene's got Athene's got an in for, for girls specifically, but she really likes her men. Really, yeah. <laughs> I just get on better with men. 
<laughs> I've oh, never guys. been a girl's girl. I just never have been. But yeah, she turned her into this fucking horrible, snaky. Yeah. Well, do you know she's got two sisters who were Gorgons yep. naturally? Um, when well, actually they're talking about fucking myths and legends. Yeah. But yeah, she, she, her, her two sisters were born snakes in hair, and she was born a beautiful woman. You'd be fuming. Do you know what? I know a few real life examples of that. <laughs> you know, when you have like a, a family and then the, the, like there's two sisters and one of them is beautiful and the other one you go, what the fuck is that? Were you adopted? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> how? How do, how do you not, as the ugly one in that family, no offense, how do you not wake up every day and see what could have happened? <laughs> And be fucking furious with the world. You just wake up every day with so much resentment and shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she um, so she gets transformed into a gorgon as well. Yeah. And what's it like? I think the common interpretation is that as a punishment for mm -hmm. for, for for you know maybe it's kind of nice. Maybe it's like a sort of backhanded. Here you go. Now your life's easier because you can hang out with your sisters and they don't feel guilty about it anymore. See, I always thought it, that it was just she was dead attractive and some Greek god was jealous. And so the Greek goddess was like, fuck you. You've now got snakes for her and you turn people to stone when you look at them in the eye. That's what you get for being fit. I think she was so fit that one of the gods, and I think for once it might not have been Zeus, yep. fucked her. And pissed off everyone. That's really because there's That's really on theme for Zeus, though, isn't it? There's loads of there's loads of stories of Zeus going down to um, uh, to Earth just to fuck women, and I think it's dead for you know. That's how Hercules started. You know, yeah. so for those of you that don't, do you know the real story of Hercules, Finn? You're about to get fucking amazed by this, right? Okay, so basically, Zeus had this thing for this woman in Thebes or some shit. And he was like, how can I fuck her? I've got a great idea. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn myself into a carbon copy of her husband and then sneak down while her husband's out and shag her. And then that's what he did. And then Hera, Zeus's wife, found out about it. And Hera's a fucking cow. So when this woman, um, you know, who Zeus shagged, became pregnant, she had um, twins. And one of them... Um, was uh, was like a normal, um, you know, baby or whatever. And one of them was like Zeus's, because that's how they did it back then. They were like, one, one cum is, one is mortal cum and one is made of God cum. That's how they did it. So uh, what, what Hera did is she sent down two serpents to like just fucking kill the babies. And then um, uh, the Hercules baby. I think he wasn't called Hercules originally. Heracles. Was, he, no, he wasn't called Heracles originally either. In the Greek, yeah. Wasn't called was that originally. Original he started out, his original name was, I want to say, Aristocles or something like Ooh. that. It wasn't, it, it might not name. be right, but he, he wasn't Heracles originally, right? So what happens is he has this other name. I want to say Aristocles, it might be wrong, whatever. Um, he, he Hera's pissed off. Alcides. Oh, right. man. Okay, so... <laughs> Um, Hera's pissed off. He, he, he lives his life, for, you know, he gets married to a woman called Megara. They have kids or whatever. Oh, Meg, yes. 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 You're thinking of the, uh, hey, um, Hades. Uh, you, are you thinking of the, uh, Disney? No, I'm thinking of the new, um, uh, game from Super Super Giant Games, and that's how we both differ in terms of our brainwaves. <laughs> yeah. You think of games, and I think of children's cartoons. So right, um, so basically, he waits until she's like, he, she waits until uh, he's like, you know, got a family and shit. And he, she, the the common interpretation is that it, she sends on him a madness um, that drives him mad, and he kills all his kids, and he kills a few other people as well. And then he comes around from the madness, and he's like, no. So he goes to the Oracle of Delphi and he's like, um, guess what? I've just killed all my family pretty much. And I reckon, I reckon that this is going to stop me from getting into the fucking, you know. Elysium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I reckon they're going to stop me from being a god because of this. What can I do? And so the Oracle is like, yeah. Um, first of all, you've pissed Hera off. So you want to change your name to Heracles uh, as like a tribute. Yeah. Okay. Secondly, what you want to do is you want to see the prince of some fucking place, right? Who's your great rival. He'll decide your punishment. And because he's your big rival, he will know how to punish you. So off fucking Heracles goes, finds his rival, and his rival is like, aha, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this opportunity to humiliate this guy. I'm going to set him 10 impossible tasks and say, once you've done all of these, 
And, you, and it was like um, slay the Nemean lion and fucking clean out the Aegean stables and all that shit. And basically, he spent like ten years doing all Shuffling that shit. shit. Yeah, well, he, sp- he he spent ten years doing all this fucking random shit, and then he finally was like done. And the guy was like, "Aha! These three don't count because you had help with this one, this one, and this one." And then he uh, had to go back and do those, and then that was that was the end. Twelve labors, yeah. The, the thirteen labors of Hercules. Thirteen, yeah, yeah, yeah. The ten labors, and then became extra. Th- it's actually yeah. a fucked up story, isn't it? Oh, yeah, they all are. <laughs> it's a fucked up. Anyway, bees. back to bees. bees. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, we got off track again. Um, We're very much the bumblebees of the podcast world. Yeah, we just bounce there's about. There's nothing systematic about this. That was what I was failing to say earlier because I couldn't remember it. Oh, really? Systematic. Okay, and mm. look at the amazing tangent that it led us down. Yes. So I thought... So, so yeah, you put you put honeybees down. Terrible for the environment. Terrible for all the bees in the area. Okay. Right. Honeybees aren't native to the UK. They're not meant to be here, really. Mm. Right. Do you know where they came from, mate? Northeast Africa. Mediterranean. Yeah. Oh, Me- yeah. Romans. Yeah, the Romans brought them over, didn't they? Yeah. With, Do you know what? With the, with the- I would say they I would say Romans are responsible for all the bad things. <laughs> Straight roads, rabbits. Yeah. I feel like we're H-S2. going to <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Or, or HSII, as Ooh. they would call it. Yes, I fucking did, did a again. Roman numeral joke. Yes. Oh, mate. So. Head back in hands. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. So, um, I, I actually stopped myself from saying another joke then that was so shit, even I didn't say it. What? And just and think. You have no filter. Y- yeah, given that I have no quality control at all, I was going to say, I thought HSII was a YouTuber, you know, like KSI. And then I stopped myself and I was like, even that doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, that's niche upon a niche. It's niche upon a niche. Uh, So anyway, I thought that you were going to come on this podcast and I thought that it was going to be like, listen, bees are dead important. If all the bees go, we're absolutely fucked. We need to save the bees, 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 bees. But you're more like, eh. I'm I'm more like, yes, save all the bees, but I mean like all the bees, not just honeybees. Okay. Right. Because honeybees, they're basically fine. Yeah. Like, the co- colony collapse disorder was a big thing in the news about f- six years ago. Colony collapse disorder? Yeah, it was a thing in America where just, like, entire, like, 50,000 bees spontaneously upped and died. What? Yeah, it just it happened quite regularly over in the States, and everyone thought this was going to be the end, and just turned out to be a bit of a weird thing that happened. It was a combination of, like, pesticides and diseases and the fact that in America, when it comes to pollination, they load up like 10,000 hives on the back of flatbed lorries and drive them across the entirety of the states on like an annual cycle. And for some reason, bees aren't very healthy when you do that to them. Really? Because they sort of, they get about a week of where, of like learning where all the food is and then they're suddenly driven off to another site. And So hang about. Americans have decided to take bees on a road trip. Massive road trip. It's a huge industry. Wait, 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 wait wait right so in america yeah. obviously there's a problem with pollination uh e- even though all the even though all the animals all the insects i should say will pick up the slack and wind picks up the slack as yeah. well you don't you'd rather have honeybees like you, you'd rather have them than not have them yeah yeah so what america does to kind of encourage pollination is they load up a truck full of hives of bees and drive them across the country. Yeah. What does that possibly solve? Well, see, it's, it's a result of food production, of, of like what we say a necessary scale of food production. So in the States, like in California, like the almond crops, right, you've got acres, like hundreds of acres of trees. And in order to make sure you've got um, as much food out of the system as possible, they've gotten rid of all of like the weeds, all of like the native plants in that area. So there's no food around to support the bees that are there. So it's just almond trees, as far as the eye can see. Right, and okay. So it's almond trees only flower for like a week. I see. And the rest so of the year, it's no food. So it's gotten rid of all the bees' food. Yeah, so there are no bees anymore. Yeah. And because they've had like just miles of trees that are just almonds that flower once for a short period. Wait, so when you say... Oh, so when you say that there's um, these these bees that are on a road trip, it's not a one... It's a permanent fucking... It's a permanent road trip that they're on. More or less, yeah. They, well, like when there's no more pollination to do, they stop. 
and they just go somewhere else. But as soon as as soon as the pollination season starts up again, they're back on the trucks and driving. That is fucking. Me- just put a hedge up or something. That's why I've been arguing for years now. Just like just restore the habitat. How's that not easier though? Yeah. Well, it's it's an economic system based around driving and using petrol. Of course, that's going to be seen as the easiest way to do it. But it's like. What, just put a few plants out that they could... Why do you have to... I, I just... I don't understand the logic, it right? It belief, doesn't it? I, I, I don't understand the logic where they've gone, right, this is the problem. There's no food for the bees. What should we do? And I'm presuming one person said, okay, what we could do is we could plant some plants that are, like, food for the bees. And they went, oh, yeah, but I need the space for my crops. And you go, well, you're just fucking hanging baskets. Do you know what I mean? You ever been to the Cotswolds? Just get a fucking hanging basket, fill it full of bee fucking food, and off you go. And someone else has gone, well, what about if instead of doing that, we had some sort of bee megabus that, <laughs> that constantly parades the fucking county or the country or, or the state or whatever. Yeah. And just is on a constant side. That is fucking madness. I like to imagine his voice probably sounds like, I think we should put them on the track. That's <laughs> terrifying. Never do that voice again. <laughs> that's your... That, that's, that's, my, that's my creepy American voice. That's your voice. sex offender voice. Oh, that's yeah, what that it is. is. Yeah. That's your sex offender yeah. voice. I think we should put them on a truck. <laughs> what, bees? No. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah, bees. <laughs> that's what I meant. That sounds much more yeah. normal than what I was thinking. That's... In, do, do any other countries do that? Not really, no. But um, I, you, you've seen pictures of uh, huge farms in China that sim- have a similar problem of growing food at scale. And ha- and instead of opportu- opportunity to use bees on trucks, they use hand pollination. Like, bees little, little on brushes. trucks. Yeah. Bees on trucks. It's like car games on motorcycles. It's just yeah. one of those <laughs> phrases that really just leaps So they use the what, sorry? Instead of bees on trucks, they, they hand use... hand pollinate. They use little paintbrushes to move pollen around. They do what? What? Yeah, they, 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 they move the pollen around themselves. What? And, what? And, what? And what? rather what? than restoring a habitat to make... So they go around on motorbikes? No, they do. Just They just walk around in, and just go up to each flower and move some pollen around. Seriously? Yeah, rather than letting the bees do it themselves. Rather than creating a habitat that is to make it better f- for bees. Do you know what? What a fucking job. What a CV that is. I feel like these, these are all ideas that like were created around the idea of we've got to make jobs for humans. Yeah, 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 like yeah. We, we got to pay. We got to have pay someone to drive a truck around with bees on. We have got to pay people to, do you to know, pollinate instead of letting bees do it. Do you know what? It, it does sound like a <laughs> like if you were going to the job centre, they were like, "Listen, you've you've been on job seekers allowance for a year now. We found you a job. You'd be like, great. What is it? You're going to be moving pollen. You'd be like, fuck off, <laughs> fuck right off, right now. Holy shit." Yes, Fucking hell, that's stupid. If you think about the scale of the problem we're facing as a planet. Right, like yeah. We've got climate change, we've got biodiversity loss, we've got pollination systems failing all over the world, right? And it's just entirely driven by selfish, greedy, capitalistic tendencies that we seem to have as like, based our economic systems around, around the world. So why, right, okay. So, so, so these these, why would... China and America have decided that (laughs) that driving a fucking tour bus of bees around or pollinating all the plants you sell. I can't, I honestly, I can't fathom which one's stupider. I, um, why would they have decided that that's a better way to go about business rather than just let bees do what bees do? It seems, it seems mad, doesn't it? Well, I think part of it is that there's a huge delay. And if like, I'm talking about you, you say, you say plant hedgerow, put some wildflowers down. There's a delay between putting a hedgerow down and the hedgerow growing to be healthy enough and big enough. So how flower. long's that delay? It's quite been years since I've done any hedgerow laying. Pro- probably <laughs> like, I mean, like two, three years. That's not bad. But that's like, there's that. And then you've got to wait for all the pollinators that you've wiped out because you keep spraying chemicals and yeah. you've destroyed all their food. You've got it for them to come back. And they have a nice, stable, healthy population. That's like five, ten years. There's, Fuck. So there's, there's this huge delay between, like, say, okay, we can drive bees around today, fix the pollination crisis. <laughs> I'm sorry. Or we can plant hedgerow, <laughs> and then it'll be fixed in 20 years when you've gone out of business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
It's like the whole fucking, like, give a man a fish and he eats for a day. Like, you know, drive, drive a bee around mm. and we fix the pollination for a day. Yeah. But teach a bee to drive. <laughs> and that is how the Google car will work. <laughs> oh, no, my. No it's just tiny little bees. Behind oh, the God. It's so stupid. So what you're saying, though, though, with that is that we need some sort of entity to come around and, and tell people to do the more morally upstanding thing, to form some sort of system of rules and commandments and sort of be a sort of Beezus. I knew you were setting yourself up for a pun. I knew it. I saw the little glint in your eye. I almost stopped you and said, there's a pun coming here. Yeah. I saw the minute that you were, oh, 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 Beezus. Yeah. Oh, my God. Shit. I, I just, I don't, I, yeah, I just don't get it. It baffles me. It baffles me. So, right, you know how, like, because... I, I, I always want to know, like, who does the PR for bees? Because yeah. for me, it sounds like bees have had a really good run of it and wasps have been getting shat on from a great height. Yeah. And actually, the much of a muchness. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, for, for the bee side of things, we've got Dave Goulson. He's, he's the, the bumblebee king. Who's Dave Goulson? He, he's a professor of pollination. <laughs> I he's, he's got so, some he's so, got the coolest career it sounds like the kind of thing that like a guy at the bar who's like shagged a load of women would call himself yeah they call <laughs> me the professor of pollination fuck it i am hell. so highly fecund yeah exactly it's the professor of pollination yeah so he's he's written tons of really awesome books about the life of bumblebees i think we're gonna have to put an asterisk next to the word awesome there. <laughs> <laughs> they're cool books they're, like, they're, very, they're probably very very well, i think it's cool so so, so he's, yeah. he's written books about what sorry Go bumblebees on. and the lives of bumblebees and like the plights they have and how, how life is just really difficult for them. I thought the plight of the bumblebee was a song it is it's pretty good yeah it's pretty, pretty upbeat <laughs> Um, so yeah and, and then for for wasp side of things yeah people don't really big them up very much i mean um helen roy who's uh, uh queen of the wasps she she's she's actually the ladybird lady the ladybird lady yeah uh, she's brilliant she she works at lancaster as well oh, okay um she works for center of ecology and hydrology she's fantastic she's like one of the she's one of the coolest of bug people are you all like bug people? I think we're, 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 all, we're all pretty much a little niche of buggy people. Little Pokemon but, gym leaders. Hell yeah. <laughs> was there ever a bug type? Yeah, was, there was, was a bug type Pokemon. What do you oh, think? No, no, Fucking bug type, bug type gym leader. Yeah, of course. I, I know about my, 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 my Weedle and my Beedrill and my Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was Kakuna. definitely a, a bug type gym leader. Because yeah, Brock would have been it. Cause he was no, he was to... Rock. Brock, Brock was the Rock type. Yeah, because I remember that Brock was Rock because it yeah. literally... His yeah. name has the word rock in it. Yeah. And I they, thought they that's definitely hard, that's definitely why they called him Brock. Because yeah. no one's called Brock. Also, it originated in Japan. Yeah. Nobody in Japan's called Brock. But a lot of people are called Rock. Are they? Mega Man. You know Mega Man? Blue guy with laser arm. Okay. He was called Rock Man in, in Japan. Was he? Yeah. Rock L Man? Rock. R-O-C-K. Rock Man. You'd think that they could try harder than Rock Man. Pretty cool. It's the, it's the oh, laziness. It's even lazier than Mega Man. I think Lego, Me Mega Man's slightly less lazy. It's, it's alliterative. And they got that going for it. Yeah. yeah. Whereas Rock Man is just. Oh, yeah. Oh, rock Man, isn't it? Yeah. You can turn into a rock. It doesn't even sound like a good superhero, it's, Rock it's Man. Not, no. But anyway, um, yeah, so Hel Helen Helen's just did a, did a big sort of pub, uh, publicity and sort of pushing pushing the agenda for wasps. Pushing the agenda yeah. for wasps. Wasps do have a bad... So here's the thing with wasps, right? I fucking hate them, yeah. right? I really don't like them. Uh, and I have a thing where whenever they're buzzing around me, I have to... I'm, and people go, oh, don't, don't flap at them. <laughs> don't flap at them and don't move around because then they'll sting you. Just let stand perfectly still. They'll know you're not a flower and then they'll go away. Is there any truth in that? Yeah, a little bit. Honestly, I mean, if, if, if you're flapping around, the more likely you are to get them... Basically, a wasp will really only sting you if you sort of trap it against, like, something and your skin. That is bollocks, because I've been stung by wasps for no fucking reason before. It seems like it is. Oh, yeah. I wasn't trapping them against shit. <laughs> they were the instigators. Yeah. Don't you come out here and say it that It was wasps, the wasp's fault. I'm victim blaming. Wasps only <laughs> act in self-defense. Bullshit they do. Um, right, okay. What can I do... 
to get rid of wasps? Like, like, it, is there a certain thing that I can do or, like, light a fucking candle or something that won't make them come and ruin my barbecue? So, yeah, the barbecue ruining behaviour, that's, that's, yeah, that's... So you, you see wasps when they're angry and they're coming at you. Yeah. You really actually see them just getting on with life because yeah. they're, they're actually a lot faster than hummingbirds. So they go zipping around. Yeah, 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 yeah. But when they're sort of going quite aggressive, is that a thing, like, at the end of the season, they've gone all Batman on you and... Yeah. My M- Martha's dead. <laughs> um, Must avenge mother by ruining every picnic. Well, so the worst thing you can do is you can tell them your mum's also called Martha and that will stop her. <laughs> <laughs> what you need to do is if a wasp is close to you, you need to huddle it in, not trap it. No, no, no. And you need to go, I feel your pain. And then, and then you and the wasp. Why wasp, did you say that name? <laughs> take take the wasp to a grave of your own mother, and it'll realise that you have a shared life experience and leave you be. Um, but yeah. So um, so at that point, they they they've lost their sort of drive to do good their normal pollination <laughs> stuff. Okay. Right, and their normal sort of activities. That's why they're going after you. They're going after your food. They're going after. They see you as a threat. Yeah, so yeah. really, at the safest point thing to do at that stage. It's kind of a bit sad, but just put up um, I call a, a a jam trap in your garden, okay. or, or you'll see them actually around like ice cream uh, places. Okay, what place sells ice cream? Uh, like no, a, like a, a parlor. A parlor, yes. Yeah, an ice cream parlor. Did I say it weird? No, I'm saying it weird. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, you put you you see them at like um, just basically imagine a jam jar with a tiny hill box in the top, and there's like jam and, and water inside it. And the wasps will come in, they'll and they'll get trapped and they'll they'll drown. But that will limit the number of angry wasps to come towards you. Yeah. But they only tend to fly into those traps when they've lost their nest to begin with. I see. So it's it's somewhat cruel, but it's kind of just. It's yeah. mm. you can you can justify it to yourself. Am I right in thinking, and um, this might be a piece of bullshit that's been flying around my brain for ages, is that you shouldn't ever squash a wasp and kill it because by doing that, you release pheromones. Like the, the, the wasp releases like a fucking signal of like, hey guys, someone has just wronged me. And then all the other wasps in the neighborhood all come and like try and avenge it. I don't know how true that is, but it's very close to an actual fact. Is it? <laughs> that's my favorite thing anyone has ever it's said on this podcast. That's the cruelest pod- thing you can say to someone. That's one of my favorite things that anyone's ever said on this podcast. And I quote, <laughs> I don't know how true that is, but it's very close to an actual fact. Love it. Go on, what's, what's the actual fact? So honeybees, when they sting you, yep. that happens. If a honeybee stings you, yeah. the sting actually smells like a warning pheromone to all the other bees in the area. Really? Which is why if you get stung by one bee, you're more likely to get stung by more. What, like for the rest of your life? Oh, no, just just whilst the sting's on oh. you. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you you're meant, marked. I thought you meant the like, mark of the berserk on the back of your neck. I thought you meant like forever. <laughs> like I was like, that'd be fu- that'd be such a fucking pain in the ass. What a bastard thing to leave behind. Um, I thought as well, and again, this is something that you're going to tell me that is bollocks, I'm sure. I thought that honeybees and bees and bees and bees mm-hmm. don't sting because when they do, they instantly die. Honey, honeybees, well, okay, cool. So this is where like evolution and, and numbers of indiv- in the hives matters. Why right? is it that right. every fact I thought I knew about bees is bollocks? Did, it, you, did you know that as a fact? It's true did, adjacent. Did you know the fact about the fucking wasp? And if you kill a wasp, it sends a... Bollocks again. It, it, it's, it's close. Did it's, you think that there were different types of bees? It, 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 it's insane. This podcast is fucking mental. Right, continue. Where was I? I, I literally can't remember. We were bumbling around. Uh, no, so honeybee stings, stings you once, stings. dies. Yeah, so honeybees sting you once, they die. They've got barbs like on their stingers. Right. Like, when it gets stuck in you, when they sting you, it gets stuck. That's why a honeybee stings more. Uh, it doesn't hurt it's, more. It stings once. Yeah, I've I've kind of become numb to honeybee stings over my life. I've been stung so many times. Really? I just stop noticing it now. But they, so they it, they sting you. It gets stuck in yeah. right, because of the barbs. And then when they try and fly away, it pulls out. Uh, and so the idea being that's supposed to leave behind the venom sac where all the, the sting is kept. Yeah. And the muscles that surround it. So that you, you'll see the sting stuck in you and then you'll see this little blob of white. Yeah. It's pulsing and contracting 
keep pumping more venom into you, even though the bee's gone. Oh, that's fucking evil. But that's also attached to like a lot of their internal organs. So when they pull away, they will die eventually because you basically ripped out, you like gutted them. Right. So honeybees, that happens. Bumblebees, wasps, and well, solitary bees don't really, they can't really sting, to be honest. But yeah, bumblebees and wasps, they're stingers, they're smooth like a syringe. They'll go in, sting, and fly away. So it's only honeybees yeah. that have the serrated edge yeah. that, that that is designed to leave behind and fuck you up. Yeah. So why why evolutionarily is I don't even know if that's a word. Oh, good, good for me. Good for me, gold star. Um why is that a a thing that they have evolved? Because surely it doesn't make any sense to be like a fucking one punch and you're dead. Do you know so, what I mean? Yeah, it no, it does because Honeybees have evolved to have massive nu- massive hives, like 60,000. Bumblebees is only 50, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. So honeybees can afford to lose a couple of, of like guard bees when their guarding is so much more effective. I see. Right. Right. So a bumblebee, they sting, but uh, they can't afford to lose anyone because they're already right on the edge of what's like available for them. So they have to be able to sting and, and leave you. Right. Honeybees, they can throw as many as they want at you because they've always got more. So it's like if you were if you had to fend off an attacker, what would you rather have? A knife with a serrated edge, but you could only use it once, or a drawing pin that you could use as many times as you like. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um do you want to go sort of World World War Two uh um armament? Yes, of course I want to go World War II armaments. Sorry, sorry. It's, it's, I mean, what, why even ask? It's a simile, not a metaphor. It's <laughs> <laughs> fucking... Yes, go on. It's like... Oh, yeah. the calling card of the simile. There we go. Go on. It's like the uh, American tank production system. The American the Sherman tank, tanks. They Sherman were, they tanks. They were cheap and crappy, but they could pump out thousands of them. I see. Versus the German tanks, the Panzer tanks, which they didn't have the resources to make quite so many. But they were so they great. Made them really good. But they made like four. Yeah. Right. Okay. So you'd rather have, in warfare, you'd rather have a million shitty things that you can only use once than three really good things. Yeah. Right. And that's, that's how those two sort of, that's how bumblebees and honeybees diverged in their evolutionary okay. pathways. One went for small numbers, but uh, they don't die. Right. Babies went for massive numbers, and who gives a fuck? So, like, in conclusion, it doesn't actually matter if all the bees in the world, like, like it wouldn't be preferable, but if they did all die off, like, we wouldn't be fucked as a species. Yes, yeah, because, so, like, we've got tons of stuff that's not a bee that yeah. pollinates, and they're all really quite good at it because there's so many of them. Insects, wasps, and the Chinese. Yeah. Uh, the three, the three things that pollinate, <laughs> <laughs> and bats, and bat. Have you ever had? Bats. Have you ever had uh, durian? Do- I have had durian. It's fucking horrid. Yes, bat it's pollinated. Dis- no, oh, they're so cute. They're like big fuzzy fruit bats, and they're all covered in head to toe in yellow. Shut pollen. the fuck. Do you know what durian is, uh, Finn? So durian is a fruit in Asia. And it is... So basically, here's the thing about durian. It fucking stinks to high hell. It smells rotting flesh. It's it's a smell that I can't really describe, but it's, it's fucking pungent. So much so... In, in Singapore, you're not allowed it on p- pretty much fucking anywhere in public. Even e- even in Thailand, where they just let you do whatever the fuck you want, apart from insult the king. Um, e- e- even then, they won't allow it in hotels and things like that. It stinks. It's also this fruit. Uh, the outside of it is like a hard green ball full of fucking spikes. And it stinks like... Fu- if ever there was a fruit that said, don't fucking eat me, it's the durian. It's... It might as well be wearing a fucking tap out shirt. That's how aggressive this fucking fruit is, right? And it's it, it, it rips apart. It's not. It's the consistency of it is not like an apple or an orange. It's almost like pulled. It's it's like a jackfruity type yes. pulled porky type thing. It rips apart really softly. It's almost like a rotting piece of flesh. Yeah, it's it's sort of. I don't want to say marshmallowy because that's not really right, but it's got that stringiness, to stringy it. elasticity to it, yeah. 
and that kind of almost like dough, kind of doughy yeah. sort of thing. But the taste, uh, even thinking about it, is disgu- it's really... It's for hipsters. Yeah, but but, yeah. but, but some people, it, it, it depends how your enzymes are in your mouth or whatever. Some people get a really nice... It's like coriander. Some people, when they eat coriander, they taste soap and nothing else. Um, violets. Yeah, yeah, but... Uh, this is like that. Some people, it's a delicacy. Some people love it, think it's the best thing they've ever tasted. Horrible. Absolutely fucking Did horrible. A little bit of sick just came out. A there. little bit of sick came up. <laughs> Honestly, it was horrific. Do you, do you know what else I um, I had over there that I think is fucking disgusting, but people, especially in Thailand, love mango sticky rice. I like both those things on their own. But together, yeah, it, it happens. It doesn't work. But th- someone along the lines at some point has convinced them that it does work and it doesn't. So the mangoes, especially over there, are the most beautiful, delicious, ripe, gorgeous, flavoursome mangoes you can ever have in your life. And it's a delicacy to have them with sticky rice, the sort of rice that they make sushi out of and stuff like that. It just doesn't work together at all. Mm. It's, it's weird. Absolutely weird. Mm. I have a feeling that you've been to Japan loads because you've mentioned it about three times. I, I have a feeling that you exactly. really want to go or something like I that. I do. Um, I, you know what I did last year? Not go to Japan. I sent a, <laughs> I sent a bloody undergrad to their project in Nagasaki. Did you? And to this day, I regret not saying, ooh, is there any, can I, can I come too? <laughs> so yes, yeah, she came back with like all these amazing stories about all the beekeeping she did out there. All the beekeeping, all the superheroes that she came across. Yeah. Not your average boss themed superhero anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Oh, like, Why did you not go? I don't know. Have you got like. Yeah, um, well, COVID kind of happened. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> true. That's true. We are talking about the uh, just the, the, the dark times. The dark times, the before times. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. So I, th- I, think, I think we're pretty much. Oh, let me ask this before you go, right? Because yeah. bees is your thing, but I'm judging by your uh, insect shirt that you are relatively well versed in all insects relatively what what is the one insect that if we lost it would be fucked dung beetles really yep i did not expect you in a million years to say so in my not head quite so quickly it, <laughs> it was quick wasn't it in my head what dung beetles do yeah. and and i'm pitching this uh, purely from having no knowledge at all, other than they just crop up from time to time. Usually, there is a uh, uh, usually there's a picture of a dung beetle um, in in like in a film when the main character goes to like Egypt or Morocco. Yeah, to show that they are in Egypt or Morocco, yeah. they'll show a dung beetle pushing a ball of shit yeah. up a hill. They'll be like, "We're in a foreign place now. This doesn't happen at home, does it?" All dung beetles do in my head is they push shit to make it perfectly circular mm-hmm. for no reason up at all. Hill. Up, up a hill. Up a hill. Sisyphean task. Why? <laughs> all right, right. So, so, so dung beetles, right? They're literally everywhere. Wherever you've got an animal that shits, there are dung beetles. So there are dung beetles in the UK? There are dung beetles for basically every kind of shit. What? Yeah, so there are ones specifically for, like, dog shit, and ones, there, for, ones wait, for cow shit, and ones for sheep. Just a second. Yeah. Just, just, just a second. You are telling me that there are dog shit dung beetles yep. in the UK. Yep. Why then have I seen, having had a dog myself, I still do, I, I have seen in my lifetime a plethora of dog shits. I have seen so much dog shit, it is unbelievable. I have never once gone to pick up a dog shit and a little insect comes and goes, lad, I've got it, I've don't, got it. <laughs> don't worry. Bear with. <laughs> right, go on. Yeah, um, so... So dung beetles, right? Imagine what happens if there are no dung beetles. All the shit piles up, like as far as I can see, because there's so much of it. The but majority of it is broken down by dung beetles. But they don't get rid of it, do they? They just put it somewhere else. So what they do is they, they well, for one thing, they break it up from the, like imagine a big fat cow pad. This is just great, the great visual media right here. Right. Okay. Right, yeah. Imagine a big fat cow, cow pad that's rife with little dung beetles. They lay their eggs in it. They break it up. They lay their eggs. And then the larvae come along and they eat the shit, right? Without that, that's and that happens like fairly slowly, really. But without it, there's no breaking up of cow shit. So it just piles up and up and up and ends up just, well, one thing, it releases tons of CO2, so it ends up ruining the atmosphere. 
And then also physically, no way. Th there's no fertilizer going into the soil, so there's no more plants. And then also there's just growing heaps of shit everywhere that we're not able to deal with. And this actually happened. This happened? This happened in Australia. What, Australia lost all its dung beetles? Aust yeah. Because they, so they reintroduced, they introduced cows. <laughs> so, right. so they hired the Chinese, <laughs> the Chinese dude whose job it is to break shit up. Go on, sorry. So they introduced cows. No cows in Australia, right? There's Lots no of, cows in Australia? Well, originally. Oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah like uh, tons of kangaroos and wallabies yep. and dingoes and babies and stuff. Loads of that. Mm -hmm. But um, no cows. So they introduced cows. Yep. And now there are, like, it's almost an American scale cow industry. Coming out of Australia, right? Which is okay. Why the current trade deal with Australia is a complete fuck. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so they had all the cows, but there weren't any dung beetles in Australia. They're adapted to cow dung, so there were no dung beetles eating the shit, and it was piling up. And it was a huge crisis in the sort of nineteen seventies, eighties. And what ended up happening was some scientists said, maybe we could introduce some dung beetles from Europe that are adapted to the cows, and they did. And as a result, they, they introduced three species of dung beetles, which are now successfully controlling the amount of dung that the cows are producing. And uh, unlike the cane toad, it didn't get out of control. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. So um, how hard is it to kill dung beetles? Pretty hard, honestly. Yeah, they're, they're pretty tough. So they're pretty... Because I would have thought that if your job is shoveling shit all day... Yeah then you ain't going to be fucking, you know, bothered if someone leaves a crisp packet on the floor or something like that. But the hard, so the hard thing that's really hammering dung beetles in this country is global warming and climate change, right? Yeah. So dung beetles in this country are actually specifically adapted to very certain temperature ranges. Okay. Right, so there are like alpine dung beetles in the country. <laughs> I can't believe... The hills are alive with the sound of dung beetles. I can't believe they'd be fussy. I can't believe... Given their job, I can't believe they'd be fussy about how hot it is. They need a certain temperature to survive. Okay. Right. And as the, as the sort of surface temperature on average rises over the last few decades, the range they've got to live in has shrunk because they're just basically... They're going up mountains to get find the cool area. And there's only so much mountain left. Could we not then, therefore... I mean, you, you, you're presenting this like it's a massive problem... But could we not go to Spain and say, "Hey, listen, uh, hey, listen, Malaga, do you have any spur um, hot beetles?" <laughs> when I say "Hey, listen, Malaga," I mean "Hey, listen, the town of Malaga." I don't mean going off the airport and looking, looking a Spanish a man dead in the eye and going, "Your name is Malaga." I, I mean, I'm from Malaga. See, si, see, si, yes, my name is Malaga. Um, um, uh, could, could we not just nick some of their stuff? Yes, but when does that end? Australia, it, exactly. and then it becomes full circle. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's a, it's a solution, but it's one that becomes incredibly fragile over time because you're basically right now we've got like like twenty species of dung beetles, say, yeah. um, and globally there are a hundred. So over time, if we lose those twenty, then we've got a hundred, eighty, eighty to pick from. If we lose twenty from there, we've got sixty but to pick on. Then eventually, we have like over time, won't they adapt until there's a point where there's a dung beetle that's just like I don't give a shit how hot it is, I'm a fucking dung beetle. That's the thing. That's what we're. That's what we're seeing and why we think it's a big problem right now is that because temperatures are changing so rapidly, they the species can't keep aren't up. adapting. Shit. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, we're going to leave it there. It was a bloody pleasure. Anything you want to plug before you go? No, thank you. No. Nothing at all. Uh, yeah, Natalie Haynes. Radio 4. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you have enjoyed the podcast, please make sure that you subscribe on whatever podcast platform you are listening to. And also, why not become a, pat a patron on our Patreon page, which is patreon.com forward slash pigoted. Uh, you can start, you can get extra content from us, early access, loads and loads and loads and loads of good benefits. And they start from just three quid a month and you'd be helping the podcast out, which would be really, really helpful, helping us cover our costs and that sort of thing. Other than that, thank you ever so much for listening. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. This episode of Pigoted is sponsored by Taylor's Toys. Taylor's Toys are a sex toy company. They specialize in doing high quality sex toys that won't fall apart after one or two uses. Head over to taylorstoys.co.uk, check out the amazing range that they've got on offer, and if you use the discount code PIGOTED at checkout, you get yourself 10% off on all products. Taylor's Toys, spice things up in the bedroom. Thank me later.